finish having your conversation about organisms with your students, you want to introduce them to the milkweed bug. So you want to make sure that you have a wet paper towel, a sunflower seed, and our first milkweed bug. Make sure you seal the container so that the bug does not get out and you end up with a bunch of hysterical students in your classroom for a few seconds and that takes a while to get them back on task. Once you've done that, you want to make sure students have a hand lens and a ruler. Reason being is because you want them to collect quantifiable as well as qualitative data. So I ask students to try to get some measurements of the milkweed bug. So this milkweed bug is about 1.3 centimeters in length and about 0.4 centimeters in width. I ask students to use the hand lens as a stencil for which they are to draw their diagram. And the reason I do that is because this is the size that I want them to have it so that way we can see the details at great depth. So, but the one thing I have to tell them is that there are hips on the, on the hand lens, so you want to streamline your drawing to remove this, but at least this is something for you to start with. The reason I do this is because the first thing students start to say is, I can't draw, I can't draw. So this is one tool that I found to be very helpful. So once they have that set up, then they start to work with actually collecting information about the bug. So they go in and they look at the top part of the bug and they draw the diagram, the patterns, and using colored pencils as much as possible to match it. Then becomes the next challenge for them is that when they turn the bug over onto the vernal side, there is oftentimes the bug is not gonna stand still or the bug has gotten himself set up where the tape is at and he refuses to move. So this become an issue for them. So when they're working in pairs, I simply tell them, Whichever person is able to capture the information, fine. Let the other person just copy from their paper. Once they've done with one bug, I just replace that bug or give them another bug and have them do the same thing. So now they've completed their diagram and collection of information about two milkweed bugs. My next task to them is to tell me in their reflection what they notice that is different and similar about both of the bugs. Once students have completed their diagram and their reflection, I ask them a question about habitat. What kind of habitat do you think we need to have for this milkweed bug to continue, these milkweed bugs to continue to live? We have a number of conversations. Some students aren't really interested because they don't like bugs. So they're not interested in what kind of habitat we will create. So I have to then tell them, well, we are going to create a habitat because we will be observing the dynamics of these bugs, their reproductive rate over the next couple of weeks. So I've collected my twigs already. So I bring out the twigs and I tell them that they must construct a climbing structure for which the bugs must climb on. So we're gonna use these twigs and we're going to use rubber bands. Once we are finished our construction of the climbing structure should look like this. But when we are doing the actual habitats, I prefer to have my twigs to be a little bit longer because that way we have more flexibility on how we position them in the unit. So one class may construct the climbing structure. Another class may construct the food sacks. The food sacks are made up of sunflower seeds with some netting and rubber bands. Students are given 100 sunflower seeds where they count out 50 and put them into the netting, seal it off with the elastic band and set it up for two food sacks to go into or to be attached to the climbing structure. So once that is done, the next thing that we do is, is that we start to create the water fountain as Students know that organisms, in order to continue to thrive, they must have food and they must also have water. To organize, to construct the water fountain, I give students a hole puncher where they are to punch one hole into the structure and roll up a paper towel and put it in as a wick. The paper towel will sit 
The bottom of the paper towel will sit in the water, absorbing it to the top, and this is how the bugs will drink. The other hole should be done with a sharpened pencil. Now, I've made the mistake of using a hole puncher to do it, and the results of that is that the tubing moves up and down constantly, which means that when our bugs start to hatch and they're in their first instar stage, they can easily climb down into that little structure there and drown. And that becomes an issue for the students. So make sure that you do not do what I did. Make sure you use a sharpened pencil and just apply pressure. It will work. Once the water fountain is constructed, we put it to the side. Next, the next group of students is given the bag that the milkweed bugs will live in. They're given a push pin. And I caution them on how they put the holes in the bag with the push pin. Because if you stab the, the bag which most students will because it becomes something really fun for them, then the hole tends to get a little larger than what we need it to be. And again, the instars in their first, when they're in their first instar stage can easily climb out of the hole. So again, what I want them to do is just making sure that the point of the pen pierces the bag to both sides. So that way it is enough room for air to come into, but it is not enough room for the bugs to go out of. The second thing that they will do is they must take the wooden dowel and they must put a hole in the bottom of the bag. This hole is set up so that way we can position the water fountain. This hole is just large enough for the dowel to go in. So we have to force the container through it. And the reason we do this is to allow the container to be secure in the hole. Because if we didn't do that and we just cut a hole in it, then again, we run the risk of the bugs being able to get out. Next, teams of two must work together to insert the hole into the dowel, into the plastic bag so that we can replenish the water as needed. I ask students to work in teams because someone needs to hold the bag while the other person uses the pencil to poke the hole in. Once the hole has been put through, you want to take the tube and you want to push it through the little hole there. So what we will now do is we will use a syringe to fill the, the water fountain up as well as to replenish it any time we need to. We're almost there. Once we've completed that, we now take the structure the climbing structure, and we now need to make it a comfortable environment for the milkweed bugs. Try to make it as close to home as possible. If you've ever seen a milkweed plant, you will know that the inside of it that is attached to the seed has a nice little fluffiness to it. So we make this as close as possible. Oh, let's not forget, we gotta put the food sacks on. They need to have something to eat. So we attach the food sacks to the corner of the structure and we'll have two there. The one word of caution that I give you is please try to make sure that you do not have the food sacks touching the wick because what will happen is the, the seeds will get wet or moist and then they will start to mold and then you have a mess in your bag and students will complain. So we use caution when we're doing that. So once we have the structure sealed into the bag, We now want to use a paper clip and we want to open the paper clip up in an S shape so that we use it as a hook. We put one side through the bags and the other side we will use to hang to keep our bag up. When students are making their observations, we use a dowel on a stand. So this is constructed by using a binder clip and we open it up and we position it so that students can hook their bags on and make their observations. Next, I ask students to use this setting. I make this diagram, I draw this diagram 
or rather I copy this diagram and I make four copies of it so that way there are four on a page. I